we'll repair this is on GitHub too, so you can go and inspect it later and uh, pick up on all my mistakes. Uh, we are relying on the Wi-Fi as well, so fingers crossed uh, that holds up. So the first thing I'm going to do is run npm init. All this I'm going to do is just create a package.json file which just contains some information about uh, my project. Uh, more importantly, it will host all the dependencies. So whenever I install a thing, it will be saved in this. This means if someone else later on goes and grabs that project, they can just run npm install and jspm install and just get all the dependencies without having to worry about what exactly they need to install. Uh, so I'm just going to tab through all this. It's not really important for now. Uh, so all we now have, we, we've gained a package.json file. That's, that's all we've, we've gained. Uh, I've also installed JSPN globally. If you haven't, then it's just a JSPN install, uh, sorry, npm install, minus minus global JSPN. Uh, I've already done that just to save on a couple of minutes. So I'm going to do JSPN. Uh, it's going to ask me a bunch of questions. I'm going to hit just yes for most of them. These are all documented. Uh, I haven't got time to, to go through them now. There's only one interesting thing here, which is going to ask me which ES6 transpiler I'd like to use, uh, Tracer or Babel. Tracer is like the old kid on the block. Uh, it's maintained by Google. Uh, it's good. It's what we use in production because we haven't bothered swapping. Uh, Babel is the new hipster shiny, uh, doing a lot of really cool stuff, and it's genuinely a, an amazing open source project that is probably one of the most important ones we have uh, at the moment. And it's like all done by one guy, which is just crazy. Uh, so I'm going to switch to Babel. So now what it's going to do is it's going to go and install a bunch of stuff. It's created some files for us, and this is where we rely on the Wi-Fi. Okay, we're all good. I'm almost glad that not many people turned up because it increased the chance of the Wi-Fi playing a lot. Um, so we're going to install, it's installing a bunch of things, uh, and it's installing npm, so it's going to npm and installing things like Babel, uh, a bunch of other stuff it needs. Um, the beauty of JSPM is that all this stuff, this would be a nightmare to set up manually, but thankfully we don't have to, to do it. Uh, what it's also installed is a few, uh, you can't quite see it, you can't even see much, but scroll up too much. Uh, it's also installed, these are the most interesting uh, parts. It's a sort of thing called System.js. Uh, System.js is a project by a guy called Guy Bedford, uh, along with JSPM. And what System.js is, is it's a universal module loader for JavaScript. What it means is you can give it a file that's defined in the common.js form, which is node, uh, the AMD form, which is something like required.js, or the ES6 uh, module syntax, and System.js can just load them all in um, through magic and wizardry. Uh, it uses a thing called the ES6 module loader to load in its ES6 modules, also written by Guy Bedford. Uh, he's basically my best friend. Um, we've never met, but he is going to be my best friend. I've decided. Um, but, so, so basically all this stuff is happening under the hood uh, for you, and it, it's really nice uh, to do. And I'll explain more as we kind of meet more of the JSPM things uh, throughout. Cool. So again now, uh, you can't see us right at the bottom. Let me know at any point as well if I forget that you can't always see if I'm right down at the bottom. Uh, we've got JSPM packages, all the stuff JSPM needs, uh, and that's it. So we're now ready to go. I'm going to create my index file. I'm going to do it all in bin. Uh, and I set up a little shortcut to do this because I could be lost to type all that and you don't want to watch me type all that. Uh, nothing too exciting. HTML tag, blah, 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 title. Uh, I'm going to load in system.js. System.js um, loads in that library. What it also does is it polyfills this. Uh, that one there, the, the new system API, which is part of the ES6 module spec. Uh, there are two specs. There's one for the syntax for importing and exporting from modules, which I'll cover in a minute. There's also this one, which is the, the API for, for doing these things programmatically. Uh, the first spec, the one for importing and exporting, is kind of nailed, confirmed, all done, won't change, you should use it now. This one is still a little bit open, could change, highly unlikely to. Um, there's a lot of really cool things. So all we're doing here is loading in system.js, Referencing the config file, which is all the configuration for system.js. Uh, for the most part, we won't touch this. JSPM will maintain it for us. We'll edit it in a bit, uh, just as an excuse for me to show you it. And then we also, we then import app slash main, which is basically saying, go and load app slash main.js. Typically, what you do is you'll have one file, which is like the entry point for your entire application. And from there, everything else that you need will be imported. Um, so, if I write that, I'm going to need to make a directory called uh, app. Um, this is the problem with coding on a small resolution of big font. But I've got main.js, and I'm just going to confirm to myself that this is all working. Uh, console kind of world. I'm running a little server uh, in the background, and hopefully, oh no. <laughs> uh, hmm. I didn't put it in a. Uh, didn't put it in the right folder. Okay, so we 
you see that one probably now we've got a little that's a really concern then. Um, this is kind of cool. So, so System Jess is one that's made a, a XHR request to load in that file. It's then being passed and evaluated and whatnot, and we've ended up with Hello World. Uh, quite a lot of cool stuff happened there, despite there not being much going on. What's also cooler is that we can, we can use ES6 stuff in, and Babel's going to kick in and start um, transpiling this stuff automatically. So let me just give myself a bit more room. If I can use it in. Um, if I instead use these back ticks, which is kind of template string, much like string interpolation in Ruby, um, or basically every language that's not JavaScript. Uh, and if I do like two plus two is, and then I do uh, this, and I do two plus two. So this basically is going to evaluate what's in those curly brackets. And hopefully now if I refresh, uh, we find the console, we do get two plus two is four. So that, that's really, really cool, because that's kicked in and kind of, if we go to uh, network, and refresh again, I believe it will look, it's on a bunch of stuff. So it's loaded in, the ES6 module loader, and it's kind of, it's just, everything's taken care um, for us, kind of behind the scenes. That's what I really like about working in this workflow, and you hopefully see as I install more and more things, that I don't want to really ever have to go and configure anything. It just, I said, okay, it all sounds far too good to be true, which is another reason I like doing it as a live demo rather than slides. But this, this stuff genuinely does work and, and holds up pretty well. Cool. So that's kind of the first step, and we've passed the first test. Uh, what I want to do now is, is get a library that's going to let me make an Ajax request to the GitHub API, completely some JSON that lists my open source contribution. Um, I'm going to use one called whatwg uh, fetch. This is a polyfill for the new fetch API, which is incoming. Um, it's maintained by GitHub. Uh, you don't need to see that. It's not too exciting. Uh, so effectively, the reason I'm using this over another library is this stuff is going to be in the browser eventually. When it does, it means I can ditch uh, this as a dependency. It's another good reason to use all this stuff today is when like ES6 modules are in Chrome or whatever browser you need to support, you should just be able to remove uh, system jets and it should all just kind of hold itself together on its own. It should be really nice. Uh, so we go into the terminal. I'm going to run jets to install npm colon lot wg. Uh, the npm there does exactly what you'd probably imagine. It tells JSPM you need to go and look on the npm to find this particular module. Internet is good. Cool. That's easy enough. Uh, okay. So if we go and look now at the config file, this is the file that System JS, uh, sorry, JSPM kind of maintains for us. So you are able to edit it if you need to. Uh, it says a bunch of config. Blah, blah, blah. A bunch of this config, by the way, was set up when I hit enter through all the init and you could configure it if you wanted. And down here you'll see that it's got this, this map object. This is basically maps things, maps names to where it's actually going to go and find the, the source files. So what this means here is now what wg minus fetch is here. I can go into uh, app slash name.js. I'm just going to say import uh, what wg. I always want to type tf. Um, fetch, uh, and let me just get rid of that. Okay. I'll explain all what's going on in a minute, but I like to prove to myself that every stage this stuff is working. And it has worked. So I've gained, I've gained a global fetch. Uh, this is the first time we've seen the new ES6 module syntax. Uh, this doesn't actually imagine it's just going to go and make it and like file it in. This is a bit of an odd one in that because this file is a global, it kind of polyfills in a global, we don't need to get hold of what it exports, we don't need to kind of import an actual thing, uh, but we'll do that very shortly. So all this is doing is just loading in that file, if you look at the network, uh, and kind of browse through it. You can see somewhere online there you go, and you can see just there it's loading in what we can to app, blog, 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 blog. Uh, and you see it's loading Babel for us as well, and everything else is just kind of getting done. That's pretty really good. Uh, however, typing what wg minus fetch is, is far too much effort. Uh, so what I like to do often is map these things. This is polyfilling the fetch um, library, so I'm just going to change this map to say fetch. Uh, stop trying to make fetch happen. Uh, I've got to get that in, sorry. Uh, if I refresh now, it's going to error because it's going to look for what wg fetch, but it doesn't find it because I've renamed that to fetch. Uh, I'm going to go up here and just change that, and hopefully now we'll be back to so that's, that's kind of the main reason I found to dive into the config so far is if you just want to change the name of something. Uh, often modules have longer names than you'd want to type in the, the import. Worth noting as well, if, if I didn't have this fetch here, I could type import npm colon blah 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 blah. 
and that would work just fine. But obviously, for very obvious reasons, I do not want to do that. Uh, so you kind of can maintain it now. I could have also done this when I installed the module. So I could have typed JSPM install fetch equals npm colon what wd to fetch. And that would have told JSPM to set up the mapping to be fetch. Uh, so you can do it in the command line uh, as well. Right, so I'm going to leave that import fetch in and we can start actually writing some proper code. And create a file called get repos.js. Uh, this is just going to export a function that lets me hit the GitHub API and return with uh, some data rather return with a promise that might resolve to some data. Uh, okay, so we need to use the export keyword. This is part of the ES6 module spec. I'm going to say export default function. It's going to take in a username uh, like that. So in ES6 modules, there are two types of exports. There are named exports and there are default exports. Uh, a default export is effectively the, the, the one thing that this module is responsible for. So this get repos, func uh, get repos module it seems to just export a function. It's the only thing it does. Uh, you're kind of encouraged to go for default exports generally. I think I like the idea of, of a module exporting either one thing or one function. I think that, that works quite well. Uh, well. There's also named exports. We have multiple exports that explicitly named and we'll come across those in a bit too. But more often than not, I find myself using this over uh, named exports. And it's kind of what the, the people behind designing the syntax want to kind of push people towards. Okay. Uh, I'm going to create a constant. Again, not in JavaScript, David's going to deal with that for me. In real life, I would never make this a constant, but I'm demoing stuff, so I'm going to make it constant. Uh, and I'm going to hit HTS, api.github.com, slash users. I'm going to interpolate in the username, uh, and I'm going to go slash repos, and that's even going to fit on one line. Uh, and I'm going to return, oh, is that line messed up? Give back my thing, and that's the uh, I'm going to return fetch URL. So give that URL to fetch, which has been polyfilled in. Uh, and I'm going to say dot then. I'm going to take the response I get. And the fetch uh, polyfill provides a method on these things called JSON, which is going to just pass it effectively. So fetch is going to return to promise. Uh, who's familiar with promises? Sorry, about half. So promises are effectively uh, a better way of dealing with asynchronicity. So 